to Home Affairs here on Joy 99.7 FM and we're also on Joy Prime. Have I not missed you? It's been so long, but hey, for me, it's been a bit refreshing because after so long, I took some time off, you know, to go do family practice, what I preach, and it's been quite relaxing. I hope you have been good too. I'd like to say a very big thank you to Bernice Abubedi Lanza. She's been so, 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 so wonderful. Positive reviews. Bernice, now that I know we're in this... I hope you're listening. I'll be taking frequent breaks. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but hey, good morning one more time. I am so happy to be back. When I came back, ask Daniela, our inbox has been flooded with loads and loads and loads of messages. And then we had something we wanted to discuss. This, shall we do this? Shall we do this? Then only yesterday, yeah, in the morning, um, another mail dropped. And we looked at it and we thought, okay, this is what we have to discuss today, considering the fact that now the academic, you know, calendar has been disrupted. Mm -hmm. I know some people are coming home, others are preparing to go and all that. Uh, but usually for us, September, getting into September is, you know, um, back to school month and we have conversations related to our children going back to school. But this is even not just about school. Um, I am here with, you know, my friends, parents, teachers, and we're going to have a conversation that's really very important because a mother reached out to me. I will be sharing the letter she wrote to me. It's pretty long, but I hope it's important that you know why we are having this conversation. And we have dubbed this schools, studies, sex, and beyond. It has to do with our children getting themselves involved sexually with their peers, their teachers, same sex, and all that. Very disturbing, and we will have that conversation. However, right, I wish to encourage myself, you out there, parents, that God himself knows that this task of parenting is a very daunting one. It's a very difficult one. In his word, he says, fear not. So I'm encouraging myself and encouraging you and telling us that hmm, we shouldn't fret. He who has given us this job will definitely give us the grace to be able to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So do not fear. Amen. We will continue to ask him for knowledge, for direction, so that we are able to accomplish the task. So to myself and to you parents out there listening to me, we know we want our children to turn out the best. So fear not. Let me go straight into the letter that is informing this conversation and then we will come back to have the conversation i'll introduce my guest to you but let me just do that ariel the wellness coach good morning to you good morning Adam. how are you very well great you're looking good thank you i'm wondering what you, you have been doing now i need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you <laughs> then you tell us you know uh, yeah the aging gracefully thing <laughs> we'll share them all with you colina I yes. said I have repented. You are forgiven. Amen. Anytime you know Praise that. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Good Lady see you Yellow. Too. Oh, Grace. Great. Nicolina is a parent. Um, she works in insurance as well. But today she is here in her capacity as a parent to teenagers. And so we will have that conversation. Nothing to do with insurance. And mm. PK. <laughs> <laughs> Pakujo Afo, Pakujo pa has been a friend of this show for ages. In mm. fact, he is, he is um, a co-producer from you know <laughs> the background. Mm, Pakujo, good to see you, and he's a teacher with GPS, too, yeah. right? GPS yeah. International. Yeah. Remember those conversations we had with the teenagers who were saying all the big things? He was behind it. Mm. Thank you very much, all of you, for waking up this morning to come have this conversation with us. God bless you. So I am going straight into the letter says I am a mother and I was in one of the malls recently picking up a few items for my kids who are about going back to school. These were, um, there were these group of students numbering about four who had obviously come to shop and the conversations they were having were disturbing. I was curious so I followed them quietly while they while they picked up the it their items, as I also picked mine, they chatted away from how they can't wait to meet their boyfriends back in school, their teacher boyfriends, and they also talked about others who have chosen to be lesbians. They were excited about the fact that some of the National Service male teachers were maintained. Um, learning and main school activities were not part of the conversations. They were happy to be leaving the prying eyes of their parents for a while to live freely. 
she went on to say i was very sad listening to these girls aged 15 to 17 thereabouts she guessed their parents obviously do not know what is going on because they even changed into different clothes in the washroom according to them i was sad but became very curious and scared as well could my children be involved in things i do not know um i became curious and did my investigations and i was shocked at my discoveries i discovered that my 16 year old is a um, who is a girl had been involved in one of her teachers since she was 14. i discovered that they are planning to have sex for the first time when she turns 18 but they have been intimate in other ways her 14 year old sister is aware and they are keeping it a secret all these were safely written in a diary I found out. I am a parent who is very, and this is where the, this is the issue for me. I am a parent who is very uncomfortable. Okay, no, I wondered, she said, I wondered how many parents will have such shocks when they decide to pay a bit more attention. I am a parent who is very uncomfortable with such conversations. I do not know how to even approach it with my children. It's such a difficult subject to talk about. We quite often just tell them to be good children and stay away from bad things. And we expect them to understand. Yes, I know you have talked about this on Home Affairs several times, but my husband and I are failures in this regard. But I must admit, I am very concerned. Sex and intimacy at this stage can simply ruin the future of our children in many ways. Some even attempt abortions and end up with complications. We're often fixated on the books and studies, but a lot more is happening with our children. And parents like me are just confused. I do not know how I am going to approach this subject with the children. My husband simply says, we should get them to see a child shrink. But I know we owe them that responsibility. But we are too shy to have this conversation. <laughs> Adam, please use your most distinguished platform to tell teachers that they are to help shape these children and not to take advantage of them. Also, the issues about lesbianism and gays in schools are issues of old. But it is getting scarier now as LGBTQ, etc. <laughs> seem to be gaining a lot of ground and prominence. Adam, please dedicate some time on your show to address these concerns of parents. God bless you and your team. And she says we should call her Esther. Wow. Yes. So this is what pushed this conversation. We, I mean, I wanted to we haven't done the husband marry husband wife kind of thing in a very long time so that's what i was looking to come back to talk about <laughs> no, necessary, especially so as i have had you know a break and you know it's a very nice moment let me just leave it there. <laughs> but this is where we find ourselves i want to find out from us first of all um hmm. as mothers of teenagers and then pk you being a teacher who's been with them what do you make of the whole issue Mm. Let me start with you, Piki. You are the only <laughs> male here. Well, um, good morning, um, Ghana, and um, good morning to my um, colleagues here. Um, I would say those were confessions of um, a very disturbing mother. Yes. Or disturbed mother. Um, it's, it's quite worrying and troubling, especially when you hear conversations like this. But the question I ask every day is, now who caused them? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> um, let me start by saying this. It's never too late to start conversations on sex and sexual education, especially looking at where we find ourselves as a people. Um, it is important for us all to understand that the teacher's role is one of parenting, mm. if you ask me, mm. um, and not one of somebody who just stands in the classroom and delivers mm -hmm. pedagogical notes for students to pass. Um, this role we have as teachers, I believe that is why I'm in the studio anyway. I think that this role should not be taken for granted at all. Um, everybody has a role to play in making sure teachers play their role effectively. But I, I keep asking myself, how did we get here? Mm. If, you, if you take a casual look at, at our educational system, we have a situation where the basic if you like, elements we need as a society regarding guidance and counseling units, they are not existent in our schools. Now, let's even grant that parents have failed in their responsibility. 
especially looking at the socio-cultural um, environment you find ourselves in. A lot of parents find it very difficult to tackle these issues of sex and sexuality education. Hmm. And so I'm not saying that they should actually be excused, but the point is that if, if it is a responsibility of a parent to take their child to school, then it certainly becomes the responsibility of the school owners and then, if you like, teachers to make sure these children are, are great and are well taken care of. Now, if the teachers are not having these resources to do that, then we ask the state, not government. So I don't want anybody to say I'm being political this morning. But the state, collectively, what have we done? Go around our secondary schools and see how many guidance and counseling units you'll find. There are. Non-existent. So the question is, if I'm teaching a 14, 15, and unfortunately, those are the classes I teach, IGCSE, they are 13 to 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Now, mom is not talking to them about these things, obviously because mom is afraid of actually, in quote, spoiling the child. Mm -hmm. Dad is never at home. <laughs> the child finds solace in a teacher he or she trusts, right? And especially when you do your work so well as a teacher, naturally, children take a liking to you. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't position yourself well as a teacher to look at the fact that you are also a parent, mm -hmm. that is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. I am not going to sit here and pontificate about teaching, but it's a really tricky area, Adam, I'm telling you. The kind of children who are growing up today, who are coming up today, who are being confronted by issues on the internet, you know, Adam, it's a, it's a very tricky area. And, and I think that I need to end by saying that I will call on the state to do what is right. Okay. I am very, very happy anytime I hear teacher licensure exams, right? Because once you are licensed as a teacher, mm. the assumption is that you have been taken through some ideas about how to behave as a teacher. So that even if in the unlikely event that a child is actually making advances, you. you know where you stand. Oh. You know, I'll share a story later. Okay. <laughs> I'll share a story later. You, hmm. it, it, it's, it's sad, especially so when um, Esther confessed that um, she and her husband only tell their children that be good children. Mm -hmm. And in their minds, we're expecting that you understand mm -hmm. what, what we mean good. because we're not going to have any detailed conversation. In fact, they are uncomfortable talking about it. I always say this. The first time I asked my mother how children are made, she, she asked me to get dressed and she took me to my grandmother <laughs> to explain to me. And she was also going around, 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 around. You know? So I can, I can understand that not every parent is able to do this. But also for you parents, I want to find out, does this look like a situation that a lot of parents would find themselves in or it's just her? that um and even looking at the girls you leave home you mm -hmm. go to the mall i wonder what they told their parents mm -hmm. and then you go there in the name mm -hmm. of shopping mm -hmm. you get inside the mall you go to the washroom and you go and change into revealing clothes because your parents will not even allow you to wear those at home and mm -hmm. then when you're done you go back probably change quickly mm -hmm. and then go back home first is is this a situation most parents would find themselves in, especially so when they are unable to have these conversations with their children? And then if you have, if you ever find out that your child is involved with in such, you know, could dress up, and this are 15, 16, 17 year old, dress up from home, you approve, and then they get out and they change into something else that they know you will never approve of. How do we approach these? Go. Yes, go on, Nicolina. <sighs> Adam. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to everybody listening to us. This is worrying, um, but I am happy because uh, Esther, well done to you. All hope is uh, not lost. I would say that it's not parents would be going. Parents are going through this mm. and are experiencing this. Um, we don't at this stage, need to be playing too much of the blame game because we have all failed. We've had somewhere, just somehow. somewhere somehow we've just had a teacher. Why have I said hitherto some time back, everybody is everybody's mommy, everybody's parents. 
okay? Your auntie, uncle sees things and they talk about. It's community we live in, people see things and they caution about. But we don't take it and we have, we are now enclosed. Now, the sad thing also is that the Bible says, train up the child the way they should go and when they grow. Training up a child, I mean, I teach sometimes. So what, how do you teach? How do you train? You research. You find out. You look out for information. You do things. So when parents are shying away from wanting to engage their children in a way as in te teaching them, we will have those problems because you have, you, like you said, your mother took you to your grandmother. Your grandmother either too will be using um, objects and things to tell you things. Masa. Now I'm telling you, <laughs> the children are finding out things themselves. Oh, yes. So if you don't engage them, other things will engage them. Peers will engage them. But if you have trained them up the way they should go and when they grow, not when they have grown, no. Because when they have grown at a certain stage in the child's life, my, 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 my sister, Nicolina, you can't do let me, anything. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask you, in yeah. the case of these children, yeah. these girls who were having their own conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and talked about the fact that they had to change their clothes mm -hmm. when they go to the mm -hmm. mall, this obviously means that their parents have done some work. Yeah. They know their parents will not approve, approve of what yeah. they are wearing. Yes. But, so where did, the, where did the parent fail in this? Okay, thing? so what is happening is that you don't continually engage your child for them to know that whether I am there or not, I don't approve of something. Mm -hmm. And above all, we don't add God. You see, if you put a fear of God in a child, not me, I tell my kids, I cannot be there 24-7, but God is watching. So even, even if anybody tells them that, put dress in your things and let's go out and change that. They will not approve of it. They are parents who have been able to help their kids to be able to, you know, stop selling things because they know, apart from mommy, daddy, somebody else might see, like Esther who listened and was, you see what she found? She's a very, uh, I'm, a, I'm proud of her because she didn't end there. Mm. She went further to see, is my involved? Mm -hmm. And look at what she found. Yeah. Are we observant? Do we spend quality time with them? They, they are told, don't do this, and we expect them to understand. Look, they don't understand. They want to explore. I keep telling parents and teachers of late that, look, at this stage, they want to explore. They want to find out things for themselves. So get to know what they are finding out and add. Get to know what they want to know and then guide them. But if you say, I talk and I expect them to understand, they don't understand the and they don't want tricky. to understand. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. The issues are tricky. Yeah, it's very, very tricky. So as parents, like you said, and teaching and nurturing, you need to research. You need to find. In fact, you need to go ahead of them every now and then. Mm. As they are thinking, you should be thinking wild. Wow! Before they think you have uh, thoughts. You have thoughts. <laughs> so that certain things will be blocked. Not oh from when word. they have grown, no. When they are coming. Mm. You know, because they are, when at little as they are, you just address for them, we are going out. Where there's no mommy, I don't like that. Where there's no, I don't want it. It should be signals to be telling you something. But most of the time, we ignore the little basic things and it grows. Obviously, it grows to our faith. I like the part of the teaching side because if society is failing and you send your child to school and the teacher is also not there, look at this issue of like 14 having in a relationship with the teacher. They are nurturing, and they are the, relationship. nurturing mm. the relationship. Why don't you do nurturing so that they know that I cannot be involved at this time? They are, look, at that age, they are happy to have the opposite sex. And now one of the areas, social studies or so, they are being told that it's okay to um, attract the opposite sex and indeed it's okay. There's nothing wrong with them with that. It, it shows that they are human. But then, if you are attracted to the opposite sex, what happens? What is next? What do you do in a situation? What happens? What kind of conversations can you have that, that no, is not leading to other things. Hmm. And when you are being forced into peer pressure, we need to accept. But so as a parent, I say, let your children be your friend. Bring them up in such a way that they can tell you anything and everything. Even if it sounds insulting, 
take it up. Yeah. Guide them and tell them that, look, you don't do this. You don't talk this way. You don't say this. And then it will help. And when you find out things like that, that is not the point to start shouting and screaming and beating. You're worsening the situation. All right, oh. Get them closer. <laughs> it's not too late to let your children be your, your friend, friend and start a conversation. Great. If you're just tuned in or if you're just, you know, turning on your television, this is Home Affairs. We're live on Joy 99.7 FM, also on Joy Prime. We are also live on all our social media platforms, so you can catch us if you're on the go on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We're all over the place. And this morning, we're having a conversation we have dubbed Schools, Studies, Sex, and Beyond. Mm. My name is Adam Naite. My guest, a real the wellness coach, I have Nicolina Adumwa. She is a parent today in her capacity like that, but she is um, a very big woman in the insurance industry. And yes, then I have, <laughs> I love to call him Pakuju. Um, he is a teacher um, with GPS International. Home Affairs is brought to you by Koba Payments app. Koba, our life simplified. Onga, mom is helping hand. Kel Kit Toothpaste for children between two and six years. A product from Summer Company Limited. Kel Kit, Happy Smile, and Amasha Partners Limited, your one stop optical solution provider. Um, provider. Thank you all for banking on <coughs> Home Affairs. We appreciate you a lot. God bless all of you and stay here. We want more people so we are able to have more educative and home building conversations. Ariel. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this parenting thing looks more complicated and more daunting than anybody would think. Yeah. One moment a parent thinks that I am doing what I have to do. I wake up, I am praying with my kids, I'm talking to them. This, I, I don't think that Esther, Esther's case is an isolated case because I know, I personally know a number of parents who are unable to have these open conversations with their children. Yeah. But then there are some people who are doing it. Mm -hmm. mm. There yes. are some people who are doing it. Yeah. Their children are not listening. Mm. There are some people who have built friendship with their children. They will still go out and they sometimes they feel like the things you're asking them to do and hold on to, right, you're old school. Mm. Things are happening now, and they want yeah. to experience. Yeah. They yeah. want to be there, yeah. and you mm. two, you are saying, yeah. "How do we handle these things?" Because it looks too complicated. Yeah. And one person, sometimes you will just throw your hands in despair and go yeah. like, "Mabre." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, when um, Daniela sent me the topic, I went, "Oh, ask." I mean, it's school reopening. My daughter just came home from school. Ah. My son is still mm. in school. What are mm. you talking about? Mm. I was lost I because right. the curriculum is even. I mean, now yeah. mixed up, and we even yeah. parents don't really understand what's happening what's happening mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so i got to a point i said if they say you are coming to school i'm thinking if they say you are home you are home <laughs> i don't know what's going on anymore <laughs> so parenting is challenging parenting mm. is scary we don't know what our kids are thinking and we want to put certain things into their head and we are also having our own thoughts but we parent our children based on the way we are parented and we have to consciously look at how we are parented and see if that is helping us as we grow up mm -hmm. and make that conscious effort that I'm changing how I parent my children. Mm. So I didn't parent my kids the way I was brought up because I consciously said to myself, I want to give my children the kind of lifestyle or upbringing I did not get. Mm. And I made this decision very early. I don't know why, but my, par my, my dad is very strict and it helped me, it shaped me, it gave me some of the good, um, I mean, traits I have now. But then, at my age, there were things I wanted to explore, and mm -hmm. I was surprised from not getting that mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. and it affected me mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, to an extent I wasn't feeling well, I was depressed, mm -hmm. you know? Because I love outdoor, and just wanting to go outdoor, I didn't see anything wrong with it, but my dad says, nobody goes out, you stay in. Mm -hmm. So right now, what we are finding ourselves in, the kids are exposed to so many things already. There are parenting styles we need to explore and use so that our kids can feel comfortable exactly. to share with us. Mm -hmm. So there are permissive parenting, there's negligible parenting, there is authoritarian parenting, and there is authoritative parenting. Which style are you using? Mm -hmm. 
all of them have effects on the children and how they come back to you. So there's one that makes them feel very comfortable to share with you, which is the authoritative one. The permissive one is everything they want to do, you let them do it, you permit them everything, especially in the wealthy homes, they mm -hmm. permit them everything. Mm -hmm. In the negligible parenting, they neglect the children. So actually mother gets up and is gone, children get up and they find their way around life and everything and they start becoming adults even when they are children and that have effects on them when they grow up. Then the authoritative one is when you always guide your children, have conversations with them and tell them things you want them to do. So I created a friendship with my children and the lifestyle you create with them from the beginning helps them to depend on you as a source of uh, communication. So I had a, a friendship with my children where I take them out a lot. I do things with them a lot. And I know this thing, this phone, has exposed the children to sex already. Mm -hmm. They know all the things we think they don't mm -hmm. know. And so I openly have the conversation. I openly ask my daughter, are you still a virgin? Have you had sex? I know when she's dating. I know when she breaks up with someone. and. When she's going out, even when she's at a hostel, she tells me, Friday I'll go out. Tomorrow, and when she goes out, she sends me videos, she sends me pictures. I like to know her friends. I have her friends' numbers. I contact them. How old is she now? She's 19. Okay. Yes. And so, so I've built this kids. lifestyle with her, and trust is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you show your children you trust that they will tell you the truth, they will open up. Mm. But we are brought up from the old traditional culture so much that we don't trust that the children have a guidance system as well. Everybody has a guidance system. And no matter what, as you said, God is also guiding them. Oh. And we want to take so much control that sometimes it gets confusing for them. They want to explore this current time. Mm -hmm. I get scared, especially when you're doing it alone. <laughs> I get scared sometimes. Am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. I mean, will, will, will she turn out right? What will happen now that she's at the hostel? Sometimes when I'm going to sleep, I struggle mm -hmm. because I don't know. But I pray and I tell her, I trust you. Whatever you are doing, just let me know. So the teachers have a role to play in school, especially in the primary, the secondary time. <coughs> that is where we are shaping what they become when they get to the tertiary and, 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 and on. So the teachers have a role to play. When I go to PTA meetings or um, open day, I ask my son's teacher, how do you see my son? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they tell me things, or um, how do you see my daughter? They tell me things I haven't noticed exactly. about them home. <coughs> They tell me things exactly. I haven't noticed about them home. Our children spend more hours at school than they spend home with us. The time we spend with them is weekend. Weekend, you cry, you back market. We'll do things before we have some small time, or maybe we go to church with them. And the Christian training is also crucial. Because yesterday, before I come here, my, I was having a conversation with my daughter, and I asked her something. She said, uh, if the government says that is allowed, as a Christian, it's not allowed. And I was glad she could say that exactly. to me. Mm. Exactly. She exactly. said, even if the government says when you're 18, you can do this, as a Christian, it is not allowed, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, what we expose them to from the beginning counts. It's very important. The teachers have a role to play by also monitoring these children and sharing with parents. There should be a lot of communication between the exactly. school and the parents. Exactly. And we need counseling systems in the school. We need clubs <laughs> in the schools mm -hmm. so that these children will be taught positive lifestyle choices. And when you go online, a lot of schools have clubs. But when you come to our schools here, there are no clubs that are into counseling or um, guidance system. And I mean, my children's school started a guidance system like that, but you know, it's difficult. Parents are busy. So once in a while we did, we did one guide, guidance uh, uh, meeting. The time is not coming for us to do it, but the government needs to set up <coughs> all these things in the institutions Great. so that we can support the children psychologically, mentally, emotionally, and physically. In every way. In every way, then mm. they will be balanced. But if we think it's only education, <laughs> learn book, learn book, they need the other side to explore. And whether you allow them or not, they will do it. So show them trust, and then they'll open up to you. Pakuju got, yeah. um, yeah. okay. got us some young 
people to mm. talk to some mm-hmm. time ago and I still remember these conversations because I like I, I, I look at them in awe <laughs> when they are talking <laughs> and I remember one of them said that our parents are interested in our grades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ace it? Mm-hmm. You didn't yeah. ace mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what they are concerned yeah. about. Yeah. But they do not know that we have emotional yeah. issues. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. They, yeah. they do yeah. not know that we have mental mm-hmm. health. Mm-hmm. Like the way they yeah. say it, yeah. mm-hmm. we have mental yeah. health issues yeah. to <laughs> deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, sometimes when they don't make the grades, even that goes to affect them it's in sad. a lot it's of sad. ways. And, yeah. and sometimes <coughs> all they're expecting is for mommy or daddy to understand and have a conversation so that they are able to explain yeah. to them mm. that this probably bothered me mm. along Long the yeah. way. Mm. Yeah. That's how that come this why. happened. Yeah. But our <coughs> position always is, and you didn't, mm. do, didn't well, do well, and you didn't mm. do well. Exactly. And if you don't, exactly. Charlie, we are all guilty, yeah. aren't we? Nicolina, I'll come to you, but PK. So, this one, it's a concern, eh? <laughs> like we are all saying, yeah, you can't wake up two four seven and sit at home with your child and say, I Certainly am, not. I am being a, a good parent, so I'm here, I'm spending all the time with you. Oh, how they will end, they will <laughs> turn around and call you names, also because they have needs. So you will have to go out there and yeah, grind and be mm-hmm. able to provide for them. Mm-hmm. So at a point in time. We bring our children to school mm. so that while they are in school studying, you're also out there working, working. And then you create that time where we all can come back together and do the family thing as well, right? So how is it that eh, some of the teachers don't get it? <laughs> <coughs> that when we bring our children here, see, forget about our failures as parents. Yeah. Some teachers have also failed us. How is it that when we bring our children to school, Teach them, like you said, the teaching um, role is also a parenting role. Be a parent to them. 13, 14, sometimes 12, they are now discovering themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they think they know. Mm -hmm. Yes, they know what's on the surface, Mm -hmm. but they they don't know the consequences of their actions. Mm -hmm. They do not know those Mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you, the teacher, you have gone through that stage. You know it. You understand it. Yeah. And this child is naive. Yeah. They are talking big things. Yeah. But behind the big things, they are very There's empty. Nothing. There's nothing they there. don't know anything about life. Then you take advantage of their naivety. <clears throat> and then you become something else to them and start playing some role that you are not supposed, supposed to, to play. Playing. Why do some teachers do this? And what can we do about it? I do understand the issue about government and policies and all that but sometimes i really don't like to go into those areas because you don't have to by go. the time you are waiting for those policies to be formulated and coming into fruition and be actually in it the harm has already been done so for the teachers you go and say you're a teacher why do some of them do this things and how can we deal with it uh, thank you. I, I wish I wasn't the one answering this question. <laughs> Honestly. You are the one. Um, Maybe um, when you're there, we'll, we'll help you. See. You are the one. It's quite a... Adam, <laughs> be, before I answer your question directly, let me uh, just and say... You see, it worries me because there are female teachers their age. Why won't you go after them? When you close <laughs> and you go home, mm-hmm. you have a lot of people Adam. who are mature. Yeah. So why the children? This This is a very difficult question with a very simple answer. <laughs> uh, and I'm saying this I because like I've lived answer. it. I've lived yeah. it. And you know how I relate to my students, especially their girls. I've lived it. Hmm. See, what we forget is that the children we are talking about are aged between 12 and 19. Yeah. Period of adolescence. It's the most challenging time in everybody's life. Arguably. Right. It's a time where there's a lot of construction going on in the child's okay. brain. Okay. Right. You have a situation where we don't listen to them. Look, Adam, all they need is for someone to listen to them. Mm-hmm. That's all they need. Mm-hmm. Just listen to me. Whether you're a mom, a dad, a teacher, a father, a mm-hmm. f- just listen. Because I have needs. Mm-hmm. Listen to me and tell me what you think I'm thinking. That's all they need. There was a time one of the students came here and told you, we want our parents to talk with us, not yeah. to us. Yes. It was just a preposition. Mm-hmm. 
you know. It makes all the difference. Them. You know, I started this conversation by saying that the licensure will help, really, because then it, become, it becomes a way to weed out yeah. those who are not really deserving to be called teachers. But that is not to say I'm a good teacher. The point I'm trying to make at them is that you have been given a role to shape a child's life. Yo. The child is an adolescent who, apart from books, knows virtually nothing. Look, when we say a child is intelligent, we're not talking about, oh, I, there are a lot of things the child reads and sees. The child takes a liking to you, the teacher, and then you want to exploit it ah. because the child started a conversation. Now, let me tell Ghana that anybody under 18 is a child. Maybe we have forgotten that. Let's remind them. <laughs> anybody <laughs> under 18 is a child. So you could have someone, I have, I have, um, a 15-year-old boy who's taller than me. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Yeah. But he's still a child. So many years back, Adam, there's a personal story. And you hear perverts go like, hey, now the children who have come, they are not children. But, but, but the point is, Adam, what are we also glorifying as a society? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time that, I think there was um, a sports competition somewhere international, and there was a Ghanaian who was actually living outside the country. He was just 14. A girl. Who, I think she was a swimmer. And then one media person, in trying to uh, do a story on the girl, said, sexy, whatever, whatever. Hmm. Well, I teach English. I know that sexy has other meanings. <laughs> but <laughs> under what context? Of course, exactly. the first because the, 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 yes. the, the story came with an image of a girl who is curvy. Mm. And the first word you got is, sexy, blah, 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 swims for Ghana. Mm. And we glorified it. When these children fall astray, how do we even talk about it as a society? Yeah. You understand me? So, let me share this personal story. I've been in this business for 26 years, so I have a lot to say. What say, PK? This. <laughs> so, so, a student comes to me. This is a 15-year-old girl mm. who says, Mr. Rafa, I like the way you teach. Especially when you tell us in our faces that we are not pronouncing words correctly. How do you do it? That's oh, I just prepare my, for my class. I, said, Mr. Rafa, I think I like you. Mm. I said, okay, as a teacher, yeah? So, yeah, but, you know, and he says, I think we can start something. Wow. I said, you mean classes? So, yes, and more. And I said, do you really know what you're saying? Anyway, I'm ready. You know what? I want to agree to what you want us to start. Okay. But, listen, I cannot date someone who's a blockhead. I teach English. So get an A star in my subject. And let's, let's start a <laughs> oh conversation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Adam, Interesting. Anybody who was in that class, any student knows this story. It's a true story. Wow. Now, the girl suddenly starts taking my lessons seriously. And we had conversations along the line. Not along those lines. I, I virtually I took, took the mind of it. And now she was now focused. She told the mother that, oh, the South has been helping me. The girl made an A star in English. By the time the results came, he started sixth form. He was about 16. And he said, wait, did I tell you this two years ago? <laughs> wow. wow. You know, so it's, it's a plethora of issues. Adam. Every issue comes with the way we deal with them. We, we have not created hmm. systems where we will learn from one another. I teach at DPS. But a lot of teachers in other schools I talk to. Because these issues are not restricted to particular yeah. children. Yeah. Adam. When I talk about the state, I am not blaming anybody. What I'm saying is that, how have we even uh, trained teachers? Yeah. When was the last time any, any public school teacher went for training? When was the last time? I don't remember. When yeah. was the last time? Adam? So, so, you know, we talk about quack doctors. We talk about quack accountants. We talk about quack fake teachers. doctors. Lawyers. Have you ever heard anybody say quack, quack teachers? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to be a medical doctor because I failed. Let me take teaching for a while. Uh -huh. These are the real issues. Mm. So people who are really supposed to be doing the work, the pastoral work of teaching, are, are doing other things. Right. You know, and especially when you have someone say that, well, let me not go there. I, I was actually <laughs> going to say something, and I realized I'm going to be in trouble. So, Adam, my point is that the students need to be listened to. Sure and then guide them. And For every single question these students bring, emotionally, psychologically, 
physical whatever, there's a solution somewhere. And they will always bring them. They will bring them. They, they will, will bring, bring them. them. Great. Thank you very much. We can, we'll take a short break. We'll be back um, very soon. Okay. And before we go on that Positive break, energy. do you know about the new delicious? Oh, yes. Ungalicious is the new delicious. Mm -hmm. Create those amazing moments with your favorite unga seasoning. No matter your cooking experience, unga is a delight to make great tasting meals in every home. Unga is convenient to use and it brings out the greatest and aroma in your meals. Let's toast to the new unga chicken tablet with superior taste and comforting aroma for all your chicken meals. Mom is helping hand. Onga, proudly Ghanaian. Connect with the team at Onga at Onga Ghana on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram. And they say, toy up. <coughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and everyone can use Koba. It's, it's got a payments channel for the big bosses, the market woman, the mechanic, the cocoa seller, and the small shop owner. Sit back, relax, and simply pay for your old students' association dues and contributions. Transfer funds across all bank accounts or mobile money wallets, top up airtime and data, pay your insurance, TV subscription, utility bills, pay school fees, and pay for that watchy. The watchy. <laughs> that one. Do all these and more on COBA and get a free life insurance cover with Prudential Life. While you transact your business on Cobra, use Cobra and enjoy life's little pleasures. Download Cobra on Play Store or App Store or access via the WhatsApp channel 0242-426186 or just dial 36, oh, st sorry, star 36, 5 hash and follow the prompts. Cobra, our lives simplified. We'll be right back. is now a source of vitamin B9, helping brain development and giving your loved ones the help they need. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Introducing the new Onga Chicken Tablet. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Ah, Ophelia, did you brush your teeth before eating? No, mommy. Anytime I use daddy's toothpaste, I get bruises in my mouth and sometimes I feel like vomiting. Mm -mm, that's not an excuse. As a child, you need to brush your teeth before you take your breakfast to avoid tartar and cavity, okay? <laughs> And you, why are you laughing at your sister? Have you brushed your teeth? Yes, ma'am. I used the Kel Kids toothpaste you brought yesterday to brush my teeth. Well done, darling. Kel Kids toothpaste is made for kids like you from two years to six years. It was so sweet like strawberry. I even wanted to eat it, mom. <laughs> no, you can't eat it. It's toothpaste, not toffee, okay? <laughs> It's always advisable to give your kids Kel Kids toothpaste to brush their teeth. Kel Kids toothpaste strengthens teeth and prevents decay and cavities. As a mother, I always make sure my kids use Kel Kids toothpaste. Kel Kids toothpaste with strawberry flavor makes brushing exciting for our kids. Kel, happy smile. This advert is FDA approved.
Roma first here on Joy 99.7 FM. Also on Joy Prime. We are also on all our social media platforms. And if you're just joining us, yes, you have missed a lot. But there's still some time. You still can learn something. We have been talking about our children. And we dive this conversation, schools, studies, sex, and beyond. And we're looking at, you know, especially so children in secondary schools and how they get entangled sexually with their peers, with their teachers, even with same sex. And really, instead of, you know, just focusing on, on, on their school, their academic work and all that. And that's the conversation we are having as parents. I mean, we're not experts, we're parents. And Paco Joe is a teacher and we're deliberating, sharing ideas. And you can also share your thoughts with us here on uh, 055 0551111997. Let me tell you a little bit about Amasha Eye uh, Partners before we go on. You deserve the best care and quality designer eyeglasses and Amasha Partners Limited Eye Care has it all at Amasha. In addition to general treatment, you can test your eyesight, purchase designer frames, I like the sound of that, lenses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and you can even consult an ophthalmologist. Locate us at 1. La Opse Trade Fair, Spinters Adjacent, ICGC before Community 18 Junction, Tema Community 1 Meridian Plaza, Kolibu Opset ECG, and McCarthy Hill Opset Benji Lodge. We're also at North Kanishi Swan Lake Opset Green Hand Junction, Achimota First Floor, Densua Plaza, Takrade Axim Road, Ho Opset Housing Junction, Kumasi Airport Roundabout, Koforidia Central Hospital Road. For all your eye care challenges, contact Amasha Partners Limited on 0302939850 or 0303 or 023-533-1662. Also follow us at Amasha I Care on Facebook and Instagram. Now, <laughs> Uncle Lebo has done it again. <laughs> the devil's wife. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> you are not married to that. Need him here one hey, <laughs> you are an angel, girl. You are not seeing it all. <laughs> Now, Riverman Productions go. The rhythm, Riverman Productions goes back to the theater in partnership with Joy FM and National Theater. Riverman Productions is back with Uncle Lebo's uh, latest mind blowing, The Devil's Wife. Meet Zoe, beautiful, rich parents, a star in her own right. But three men who made the mistake of falling in love and marrying her died on the wedding night before they could consummate the marriage. Three men. And meet <laughs> Reverend Com, intelligent, beloved pastor, a rising star in his own right. But the girl he was going to marry five years ago died a few days to the wedding. <laughs> and now Reverend Com determined to marry Zoe. Someone must die. But who will it be? <laughs> <laughs> Devil's Wife shows on September 4, 5, 11, and 12 at the National Theatre. Accra, 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. each day. Rate 80 CDs. All COVID pro protection protocols will be observed at the shows. Tickets are available at the front desk of Joy FM, Shell Shops at Airport, East Legon, Tama Community, 11 at Shimoto and Dansuman, Total Filling Station at Bachona and Hacho. Say cheers at Accra Mall and Frankie's Usu. The tickets can also be bought online by simply dialing star 173 star 5 star 5 hash and follow the prompt. For more inquiries, 055 050 554 Or you can WhatsApp 050 554 Or email info at rivermanproductions.com. Sponsors, Total Family Health Organization, Daffin Finance. Um, GHQ are powered by Ghana Interbank Payment and Set Settlement Systems Limited, Gibbs, Joy FM, Hits FM, Joy Prime TV, and Daily Guide Newspaper. Get your Roverman tickets for The Devil's Wife now. Roverman Productions, be the difference. Okay, <laughs> um, back to our conversation. So, there's another thing on my mind I want to find out, right? Um... Have we failed our children? Or would we say that there's so much societal pressure that no matter how you engage them, sometimes they just go wayward? I also want to find out, how are we able 
to let these children granted that the teachers are not disciplining themselves okay i don't want to go into trying to proffer um what to do to these teachers because i know that they've been they've been dealt with you know the part i don't like is just simply transferring them elsewhere to mm, go and continue mm, mm, you know mm. these activities mm. but i mean in some jurisdictions this particular one we reached out to the mother she told us that she's taking the matter up very seriously the part i mean the part for me is they're nurturing the relationship she's at 14 that's when they started she's 16 now and they're planning that they will have their first sex when she's 18. Okay. teacher mm -hmm. or the girl not to a uh, plan so mm -hmm. and because she's young <laughs> she's also are you going to marry her i do not even know okay so i'm asking have we failed them or there's so much pressure from society that no matter what we do they will always you know trip somehow and how do we as parents let them understand that see this thing you're rushing into right now i want to have a boyfriend mm -hmm. i want to have mm -hmm. sex i want mm -hmm. to explore mm -hmm. i want to do this yes i know it comes with the age but you have so much time mm -hmm. ahead of you mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. to the that. point mm -hmm. Where I was telling my daughter sometimes, to the point where you see, there will come a time. Yeah. No, there will come a time. You will have to practically negotiate sex with your husband. Exactly. Because it is so available that you are unable to meet the demand. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have to negotiate yeah. it. Yeah. So why lose your childhood? Exactly. Exactly. Why rush mm. into it? Mm. How do we get these things into their heads so they know that everything comes with stage and exactly. time? Exactly. Now it's time to go to yeah. school. Exactly. The next time it's time to probably go to the university. Yes, you get a boyfriend. You nurture a relationship. Marriage will come. And then you have the liberty to do everything. How do we as parents, how do we go about it? Maybe we are not unable to finish today. Okay. But we will have to have conversations about parents who just find it difficult to have these conversations with their children because it's costing a lot. So yeah, yeah. how do you go about these things? Adam, thank you. I think you said a lot of things which I definitely agree to. Um, I, as you, you think, and I like a lot of acronyms, so I just put together LOC. Listen, observe, converse, communicate. If you listen, and you, you see where they are going. Who's and doing what the listening? Happening. You mean parents you should parents. listen? Um, the part that you said, have we failed? Yes, some of us have failed. failed. And society have failed. We have all failed. Mm. But it's not too late to correct the wrongs. Okay. And let's find ways. So the LOC is a lesson. Get to know what the situation is currently. Channel their energy to positive things and activities. So what if they are not listening? The so, so, so one other thing is to also observe. And then the communication come in. Sometimes when you ask them things, they won't tell you. How are you? I'm fine. Meanwhile, there's something bubbling. So when you observe, if you have built relationship with your children, they will tell you things. Even there's one sentence that they can give you says a lot. And you can draw from it to, to do other things. Now, observing is getting to pick up things that otherwise verbally will not come out from them. They are moody. You know your child is never a moody person. Or they become a talkative. You know their child is not there. They are hiding something. Always hiding in their room. Always they see you and it's like they panic. So you're observing those little, little things on the phone. How can a child be with a parent? And when there's a phone call... They walk out to go and listen to the phone. Ah, how? Where are you, are you saying how? Where are you going? <laughs> Meanwhile, you, the child, I don't have password on my phone. At a point, there were password on my children. I said, hey, hey, we don't do that in this house. I don't have password. Nobody has password. And jokingly, you know, the way we go about it is also very important. Not that you're putting fear giddy 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 in them. Not that you want them to feel, I am the mother. I am the father. No, children of today don't want that. We need to devise ways of bringing them closer, engaging them. And that is where my C comes in, conversation, communication. It's a two-way thing, feedback from them. Even Bible tells us, God say, calls on us to come reason together, sit with them, have discussion, frank discussion. This today we are talking, and sometimes don't do it too formal. You know, in a car, you're going somewhere.
just a little bit of time parents let's be a bit sensitive so that we can pick up so the uh, my my strategy is uh, loc listen yeah. observe communicate communication is a tool where you're picking information sure. and we have failed but it's not too mm -hmm. late and i don't want parents to fear there are parents who take their words to school and that is the end mm. so we've been called to come mm. back for them again mm. what is going on they don't know there are schools that have system they have form masters or form teachers so that close uh, group the teacher is able to observe and can tell you things. And so parents, let us be involved with PTA and where whoever is uh, involved with our parents mm -hmm. at church, Sunday school. Who is your friend's church at, uh, 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 who is your child's friend at As church? Ch who is your friend's, your child's friend in Nicolina, school? Nicolina, I know you have a lot to say. Our time yeah. is running out. Let me, I'll come to, um, I think, you know, some words from Ariel and Pakujo before we go. But let me just do a few messages. Um, the topic for discussion is a very serious one. Our systems are totally broken. Family is broken. Education system is broken. Policies aren't really helping. Mm. And I am disappointed in governments. Discipline is down and society is now a jar. If you don't sit up and take serious actions, um, worst things are going to happen. I'm sad, but feels there's nothing I'll do because as a teacher, parent, and a mentor for girls, I realize how worrying these things are in our schools. This is from Sayram. Um, I could say, oh, hi, Sayram. I hope you're doing well. Mm. Um, are there more it's messages? So well. Can we take a few more before I take closing comments from... Okay. <clears throat> Oh, good morning, Adam. Welcome back. Miss you, Luz. I missed you, too. So the issue being discussed is unfortunate. Some backup parents, um, um, some backup parents, okay. The teachers are not playing the role for which society has entrusted. Um, however, the case of the family being the first society can't be overlooked. We need to try and change the status quo when it comes to conversations about sex. Today's adolescents know more than adults of yesterday to expo by exposure. If parents will start the education from the health aspects of the reproductive system, like taking care of the area, graduating to the level of actual sex, safe sex, abstinence would be easier. Godspeed to 21st century parents and we're coming. We have a Herculean task to undertake. This is from Christian in La Paz. You're very right. Adam, good morning. The situation is very alarming. Now children listen to these celebrities rather than their parents. Mm -hmm. Again, churches have also been quiet on mood, mode of dressing of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Look, as a sex, look my, look, my mom never stepped in the classroom. Dad did. They do things the old-fashioned way, but never shy away from sex when advising us as children. Till now that we are adults, have you realized the two busy parents who make excuses with work <laughs> as why they can't make time for their children suddenly have all the time um, should things go south? <laughs> so my question is, why not make the time now before it's too late? Right. Ariel, I'll take your beautiful. final comment on this, and then we will, we will see if we have to come back next year. <laughs> An interesting topic, and while we were going on the break, I was thinking we are talking about the girls, the girls, but the boys are also a very sensitive mm -hmm. area, and I care more about raising my boy than even my girl, and mm -hmm. we shouldn't forget that the boys also have a very different mental and psychological things that they deal with, and we need to take pay attention to that and, and see about it. But for what we are talking about today, I think the conversation with children is very important. How you relate to them right from the beginning makes them feel comfortable to come to you as a parent. So we need to observe them. I ask my kids a lot, are you okay? And people wonder why I often ask that, but I monitor them. And I mean, when my son's mood change, I keep asking him, are you okay till he tells me? Sometimes he won't. But I keep, I mean, try to love him and do things with him till I realize that maybe he's feeling better. So kids go through things, they don't open up. But as a parent, once you observe that they are not at their right space, you start finding ways to support them emotionally, psychologically, I mean, physically. Sometimes taking them out and having a good time with them helps them to get over what they were dealing with, even if they don't open up to tell you. So we need to get closer to our children. Great. We are too distant from them. We think we are busy. We think when we have a funeral, we have to go. Mm. We think when we have a wedding, we have to go. And we neglect the children and leave them to the phones and the TV. Oh. But make time, 
go to church with them, go have lunch with them, go swimming with them, go playing with them, teach them the healthy lifestyle habits, and that will engage them. I mean, for them to rather not in, uh, indulge in wrong habits, you have to teach them the habits that are healthy. Great. Then they engage in it and they grow up with it. As she said, train up a child in the way they should go. Swimming is a hobby kids can be encouraged to learn and they can become, I mean, uh, do it as, as a livelihood, yeah. something. So there are so many the things, things parents can engage their children in that rather helps their mental well-being and keeps them in a positive direction. Beautiful. It's not just about the talking. It's also in activities and practices that we do with them. Great. And finally from you, PK. Oh, well, Adam, thank you. Um, let me say this, that if you have... A Unfortunately, you have just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so so if, if your child let's say at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, has another person as their role model, then there are questions you need to answer as a parent. Mm. You should be the first role Rope model the before they move out there. Mm. Mm. Secondly, I would advise the establishment of guidance and counseling units mm. all over this mm. with properly mm. trained professionals yeah. right. to mind. Finally, I want to um, look at this. As a state, one of the mistakes we have made is that when teachers misbehave, we transfer them instead of weeding them out. Mm. And so they will go and visit the same unfortunate <laughs> situation <laughs> on another child. Great. So I believe that this is doable. It is not too late. Let's all come together and see how we can fix the system. Thank you. And one more time, do you know that the new delicious, oh yes, um, Ongalicious is the new delicious. Create those amazing moments with your favorite Onga seasoning. No matter your cooking experience, Onga is a delight to make great tasting meals in every home. Onga is convenient to use and bring out the greatest and aroma in your meals. Onga is mama's helping hand and Onga is proudly Ghanaian. This is how we end Home Affairs today. I will, you know, have conversations with my guests and see what we are able to do next week. I am very much interested in finding out. So at what age should we start allowing our children to start having, you know, relationships and all that? We will have those conversations if they have the time. And um, thank you for doing the listening. Do have a very good weekend. Weekend's this show is up next. Stay with us throughout the day. My name is Adam Knight Day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. My Daisy copies everything I do. I do everything my mommy does. She copies the way I dress up. I dress like her. She copies the way I work. I do my homework like her. She even copies the way I talk. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> That's why I know that to give her a better life, I must do better myself. So when I'm drinking my better malt, she always makes sure she has hers in hand as well. Mummy's happy and Daisy's happy too.